so just had a blowout fight with my wife about the kids. I have a daughter, 16 years old, with us every other week. My wife has two kids, 23-year-old female and 21-year-old male, who live with us full time. Been with my wife almost seven years, married for two. Stepson, 21, moved out around 2019 after he and I had a dispute about him taking my things. He was out on his own for almost two years and had to move back in with us after breaking up with his girlfriend. By this time, he had gotten a dog and I was hesitant to let him move back in with a dog because I knew I would end up taking care of the dog. Needless to say, I agreed since it was only going to be temporary until he found a new place. Just like I thought, I now have a dog which I feed every day, clean up after, and take care of. My wife and I love the dog, so it's not a huge deal, but still, it is what it is. He doesn't pay rent, doesn't help out at all around the house, and still takes my things without asking. For example, I found my floor jack in the trash broken after it had been missing for months, and he claimed he had no idea where it was. There are many more examples. He lies continuously about stupid things and is a complete narcissist. I also have loaned him $3,500 for a plow and back blade for his truck when he wanted to start a plow business. Set up a contract which he has completely ignored. He's paid me to date $600 of the balance. He was supposed to pay it off by this January. Each payment has been a hassle where I have to ask and remind, etc. His truck was repossessed in the spring and the business didn't pan out. He now works full-time at an excavation company and makes good money. He can afford to pay rent and should be in my opinion. My stepdaughter, 23, moved home last year in December after graduating from college, supposed to be temporary, as well as she planned to move in with her long-term boyfriend after she finished her teacher training. She then broke up with her boyfriend and secured a full-time teaching job in our hometown and is still living with us. She also pays no rent and does absolutely nothing around the house to help besides watching the dog occasionally. She is literally at the house all the time, has no life, and is completely codependent on her mother. She has zero friends and a long distance boyfriend in Chicago she sees periodically. She won't do dishes, clean her bathroom, take out trash, or anything else an adult living in someone's house would normally do. She is very close with her mom, but at the same time almost uses her mom as a personal assistant. Her college loans are partially in my wife's name and were supposed to be transferred to her after graduation. We planned on buying an investment property after that. Well, that hasn't happened as she claims the loans aren't transferable. I pay all the bills and the house note and my wife buys groceries and makes homemade meals almost every night. I help cook as well and we both end up cleaning the kitchen after. As the kids make their way to their rooms to stare at their phones, my daughter, 16, is still in high school and works part-time at a local restaurant as a hostess. She is there every other week. She doesn't help much around the house either, but does her own laundry and dishes occasionally when asked. She is busy and on the go most days between work and school and social teenage things. She cleans the bathroom when asked, but honestly is typical teenager. She has held a job since 14 years old. She's very independent, and I don't ask a lot from her since we didn't ask a lot from the other two kids at that age. Here is where the divide happens between my wife and me. I've asked my wife several times to set some boundaries with her kids. If they want to live with us rent-free, they need to be part of the team. Cooking, cleaning, feeding the pets. We have two cats as well. Honestly, anything to just take some stress off our shoulders. We both work full time. She always says, well, as soon as your daughter helps, then I'll ask them. I guess she's implying that my 16 year old should do as much as our adult kids who work full time and do nothing. I've basically just given up and have been biting my tongue, trying to be grateful to have this time with our kids before they move on with their lives and start families. The problem is I don't see an end in sight we live in a high rent area in a tourist town. I don't see either one of them ever getting loans or apartments in the near future. Stepson has horrible credit, stepdaughter crippling school loans, but as I give, 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 they just take, take, take. To be honest, they are complete slobs and it's so taxing cleaning up after adults. 
Today, the fight started after I saw my stepdaughter lick her spoon with peanut butter, clean then stick it in the $25 jar of honey for her toast. She's sick, by the way. I confronted her and she started to cry. Then when my wife and I were alone, I completely blew up and again mentioned all the things I've asked her before. It wasn't just the honey incident, it was everything just spewing out about the complete lack of boundaries and feelings of being used like servants to these adult children. I honestly have no one to talk to. I feel horrible for blowing up, but the resentment is overwhelming. She is so protective of her kids and doesn't want to push them away, I think. I feel like asking them to grow up and help is a healthy part of life. Again, she mentioned my daughter and how she doesn't do enough either. I love all my kids. I love my wife. I just don't know how to resolve this. I feel like my wife never asks anything of her kids and then I'm the jerk for implying they either need to pay rent or help out. My wife is exhausted every day from waiting on her daughter and son hand and foot. I think maybe it's divorce guilt and I myself am probably guilty of that as well. Their dad isn't around and is a complete loser. Our relationship is getting worse. We never have intimacy because she's always too exhausted and we never have any alone time. We make plans for dinner or dates that are either canceled because her daughter needs something or she ends up tagging along for our dates, which we pay for and aren't even thanked for. She chooses her kids over the health of our relationship daily. She ignores my attempts at talking about it as a family to come up with a plan. For example, You've lived here rent-free for over a year. It's time to start helping out. I am at a complete loss. Am I the jerk? Edit. For all the folks complaining about paragraphs, I apologize. It was hard for me to write this. I know it may be difficult to read, but thank you for taking the time to read if you did. I appreciate it. Update. Just had quite a long talk with my wife. I told her I was willing to fight for our marriage, but we needed counseling. She agreed to it. I also said it's time for the stepkids to start paying rent or get out. She tried to bring up my daughter again, and I asked her to stop deflecting. I reminded her of her kids at that age. I also asked her to take the kids out of the equation to just focus on us. She acted defensive as I pointed out how the kids bring nothing to the table, how we could put the money in savings to maybe buy groceries or get a maid maybe even at some point help the kids get first and last month's rent. She's very hesitant to ask her kids to pay rent and now wants to focus on them just helping around the house. I said, nope, it's rent or they can find somewhere else to live. She expressed how her mom had chosen her stepdad over her and her sister and had kicked them out. I said, I'm not kicking them out. I'm just asking them to grow up and help out. We both agreed on counseling ASAP and to have a discussion with the kids after the new year about stepping up and paying rent and chores. I told her how I felt like a distant thought after her kids, and she agreed she has not been a good wife. It's a start, but to be honest, I'm afraid it might be too late. I love her very deeply, but I also need to think of my daughter and my happiness. Thank you all for the comments and ideas. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, dude. Save yourself and your daughter. What a difficult stepmom. I would be furious too if she insists that my teenager does more than her lazy, freeloading adults. Leave, dude. She won't make them do anything and they will never leave your home. Why should they? Mommy and the pushover stepdad will support them forever with no responsibilities. I'm sure there are plenty of people who would love that deal. Comment two. Both partners have to agree on who lives with them. Your wife is prioritizing her two adult leeches over you. You have to insist that they be kicked out. After all, it's your home too. If she refuses to agree, then it's time for you to break up. You are being used and taken advantage of, and for your own sake, you can't let it continue. Not the idiot, but you will be if you let this go on. Now for the update. Hey Reddit, it's been a month since my last post, and boy, do I have an update for you. After that blowout fight with my wife, Things took a turn for the steamy, the shocking, and the downright outrageous. We started counseling as promised. It was going well, or so I thought. We were making progress, digging into our issues, and then bam. I come home early one day to find my stepson's truck parked outside. 
I didn't think much of it until I walked in and heard noises from the guest room. I opened the door, and there he was, with his ex-girlfriend, the one he broke up with before moving back in. They were tangled in the sheets, and the room was a mess. My heart sank. Not only was he back with his ex, but they were using our house like some sort of love hotel. I confronted him, and he had the audacity to tell me it was none of my business. I reminded him that it was my house, and he just shrugged. The disrespect was unbelievable. I told my wife, and she just sighed, saying he was young and in love. I couldn't believe she was brushing it off. Then there's my stepdaughter. Remember how she was supposed to be moving out after her teacher training? Well, turns out she's been secretly seeing her long-distance boyfriend from Chicago more than we knew. He's been flying in to see her, and they've been staying at hotels around town. I found out when I saw a hotel charge on our shared credit card statement. When I asked her about it, she said she didn't have enough money and figured we wouldn't mind. Mind? I was livid. She's been using our money to fund her secret rendezvous. And the cherry on top? She's been telling her mom that I'm too controlling with money and that I don't understand her needs. My wife, instead of backing me up, has been giving her cash on the side to help her out. I feel like I'm living in a madhouse. Now, let's talk about my daughter. She's been the only one showing any responsibility, working her part-time job and keeping up with school. But the other day, she came to me upset. She'd overheard her stepbrother bragging to his friends about how he's got it made, living rent-free, and how he's been using my tools without asking. She was furious on my behalf and confronted him. It turned into a shouting match and my wife had to step in. Instead of taking my daughter's side, she told her she was overreacting and needed to respect her older stepbrother. I couldn't believe it. My daughter was standing up for what's right and she was being shot down. The resentment is building up like a pressure cooker. I've been trying to keep the peace, but it's getting harder every day. My wife and I are barely speaking, and when we do, it's like walking on eggshells. The counseling is doing nothing if she won't see the reality of her children's actions. And remember the dog? Well, turns out he's got a taste for shoes. My shoes. I've lost three pairs to his chewing, and when I brought it up to my stepson, he just laughed and said, dogs will be dogs. I'm at my wit's end. But here's where karma subtly comes into play. My stepson's ex-girlfriend, she's been posting pictures on social media of her with another guy. My stepson is clueless, thinking they're getting back together, but everyone else can see what's going on. He's being played, and while I don't wish ill on anyone, it feels like a small dose of justice for all the disrespect he's shown me. As for my stepdaughter, her Chicago boyfriend posted a picture with another girl calling her his true love. My stepdaughter is devastated, and while I feel for her, it's a harsh lesson that maybe she'll learn from. She's been taking advantage of our generosity, and now she's getting a taste of her own medicine. I'm still here, trying to figure out my next move. I love my wife, but I can't keep living like this. It's not just about the money or the chores. It's about respect, and I'm not getting any from her or her kids. I'm holding on to hope that things will change, but every day that hope is fading a little more. Sister's Christmas rage over old crush on my husband unleashes toxic lies. She's not ready for the truth that's coming. Me, 27-year-old female, and my sister, 29-year-old female, have been fighting recently for something that I thought got resolved a long time ago. I've debated posting for like a week now, but figured someone not directly involved would be good to hear from. A couple months ago, I married my husband Greg, 29-year-old male, after being together for four years. We met each other working at the same office, and I developed this huge crush on him. I was pretty sure he was into me too, so I decided to bring it up to my sister, Alicia. Alicia and Greg had dated in middle school when they were both around 13 years old, and because it had been so long and at such a young age, I didn't think there would be an issue, but I still wanted to check. I didn't want to accidentally start dating some long lost love of her life or something. So I thought I would clear the air by asking, she seemed a bit surprised because I don't think she was expecting to hear about her middle school ex-boyfriend randomly so many years later. But after we talked for a bit, she said she didn't really care. 
So I thought, cool, I have the go-ahead. I thanked her and moved on with things. And a little while later, me and Greg got together. It's never seemed to be an issue before recently. We hit all the milestones and she seemed to be happy for us. When he met my family again, they were a bit surprised, but things were fine. My sister was even one of my bridesmaids and seemed happy for me the entire time. Like I haven't really thought of them dating in forever because it no longer seems relevant. I mean, she has a husband at this point, so it doesn't seem like a middle school boyfriend would be something to dwell on. We were with my family this Christmas and things were going just as fine as they usually are until my sister started handing out the presents she had gotten. Now we don't get each other presents every year and people in my family typically aren't buying special presents for people they're not close to. So the in-laws don't get screwed or anything because they didn't buy every individual cousin a gift. But during my wedding planning, she said she wanted to get me something special for my first Christmas as a married woman. So it took me off guard. I looked sort of confused for a second, but I didn't want to be rude on Christmas, so I just smiled and watched everyone open their gifts. Lots of circumstances could cause someone to not be able to get a gift, so it was fine. But after she finished handing things out, she looked at me and said, I wasn't getting anything because I had taken enough. I asked her what she meant because, huh? And she said, I didn't have to be so weird to plot to take Greg from her. I'll admit, I had a crush on him when I was 11, but I didn't plan my life around dating him one day. I grabbed her and pulled her into the other room and we started yelling at each other. I definitely said some nasty things because if she had an issue, why wouldn't she bring that up when I directly asked her? We both wound up leaving my parents' house early and her husband seemed super pissed. My mom texted that she was disappointed we fought on Christmas, which yeah, I get but it's not like I did it intentionally. She's telling whatever family members will listen about how I stole her boyfriend and so they're mad at me and I don't feel like I could be the jerk, but I also can't tell. Greg's super pissed because she's been trying to message him about this and he doesn't get why this is such an issue. I've tried to speak with her a couple times and I brought up how I asked her already for permission, but she says I took her off guard. So, am I the idiot? Edit, just finished talking to my mom. We'll update either tomorrow or the next day. I'm so pissed. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. Your sister is probably unhappy in her marriage and is wishing she would have ended up with Greg since she sees how happy you guys are. She sees you living a happy married life and she somehow deluded herself into thinking you stole it from her. Comment two, wait, your sister is 29 and she's accusing you of stealing someone she dated briefly at 13. Despite the fact that she'd clearly moved on, married someone else, and had given you the go-ahead, not the idiot. Your sister, however, needs therapy. Now for the update. Hey everyone, a lot has happened since my last post. I've been on an emotional roller coaster, and I need to get this off my chest. After the Christmas blowout, Things between Alicia and me went from bad to worse. I thought the whole situation with Greg was behind us, but boy, was I wrong. Alicia's husband, Mark, has been caught in the middle of this mess and it's not pretty. Let's rewind a bit. Alicia and Mark have been having issues for a while now, something I wasn't fully aware of until recently. They've been together since college and from the outside, they seemed like the perfect couple, but behind closed doors, they were struggling. Mark has always been a bit of a hothead. And Alicia, well, she's got a stubborn streak a mile wide. They've been like oil and water, and it turns out their marriage was on the rocks long before my wedding. Now back to the present. After the Christmas incident, Alicia started spreading rumors about me and Greg. She claimed that I had been plotting to steal him since we were kids. Ridiculous, right? Greg was furious when he heard about it and confronted Alicia. They had a huge argument and things got heated. Greg told Alicia that she needed to stop living in the past and focus on her own marriage. That's when the bomb dropped. Alicia confessed that she still had feelings for Greg. She said that seeing us together, so happy, made her realize what she was missing in her own marriage. She admitted that she was jealous, not of me, 
but of what Greg and I had. It was a jaw-dropping moment, to say the least. I was shocked. I couldn't believe that after all these years, Alicia was still hung up on a middle school romance. It made me see her in a whole new light. I felt a mix of anger and pity. I was angry because she had caused so much drama over something so trivial, but I also felt sorry for her. She was clearly unhappy, and I had no idea. Mark, who had been trying to keep out of the drama, finally had enough. He told Alicia that he wanted a divorce. He said he couldn't be with someone who was living in a fantasy world. Alicia was devastated. She begged him to reconsider, but Mark's mind was made up. In the midst of all this, I tried to reach out to Alicia. I wanted to help her through her marriage troubles, but she pushed me away. She said she needed time to think and that she couldn't deal with me right now. I was hurt, but I understood. She was going through a lot and she needed space. Greg and I have been trying to stay out of it, but it's hard. We're both worried about Alicia, but we also need to protect our own relationship. It's been a tough balance to strike. Just when I thought things couldn't get any more complicated, Alicia reached out to me. She apologized for everything she had said and done. She admitted that she was wrong to take her frustrations out on me and Greg. It was a bittersweet moment. I was glad that she was finally seeing reason, but I was also sad that it took her marriage falling apart to get there. We've been talking more, trying to rebuild our relationship. It's not easy, but we're making progress. Alicia is going through a rough time and I wanna be there for her, even after everything that's happened. As for Greg and me, we're doing okay. This whole ordeal has put a strain on our marriage, but we're working through it. We love each other and we're committed to making it work. My mom's boyfriend tried to hit on me, so I shut it down fast. He's playing the victim, but the truth will come out at Christmas. I, 17-year-old female, and my mom, 45-year-old female, have always been best friends, always hung out and went everywhere together. About three months ago, she started hanging out with this guy. Let's call him Brian. The first night I met Brian, I was already skeptical. I worked at a tanning salon and he was one of our bodybuilder clients. So right off the bat, I knew he was a meathead. My mom called me asking if he could come over to help make dinner with her. I thought he seemed all right, so I said it was fine. He comes over and is immediately very loud, which startled me because of my sensory issues, but I decided to brush it off. It was all going all right until my manager's best friend decided to come over, 20-year-old female, we'll call her Katie. Katie is a very good-looking girl, petite, hourglass figure, and what caused the most issues this night, she has her body part pierced and doesn't wear bras. As soon as Brian saw her, he started telling her about how hot he thinks she is and makes my mom agree that he mentions her a lot. He then proceeds to tell her that it's her fault he gets aroused when he sees her at the salon and how she makes him want to yank it in the bed, which immediately makes everyone except him and my mom uncomfortable. Throughout the night, he continues to throw over $300 at us and call us sluts and intimacy workers. Meanwhile, I'm trying to calm my boyfriend down and tell him we're okay. Brian is now extremely drunk and sexualizing all three of the women there, me, my mom, and Katie, and trying to hug me and Katie. Katie doesn't even like me hugging her, so Brian trying to hug her makes her extremely uncomfortable, especially after how he was talking to her. I start getting loud because he won't leave Katie alone. And that's when my mom finally tells him to leave it. I tell my mom he needs to leave and she takes him home. Now I'm not the type of person to hate someone from one bad encounter, especially when said person is inebriated. So my mom brings him over another time, again, extremely drunk. This time, I stay in my room. My mom comes downstairs saying that they're driving to his house. I continue to go upstairs and block them in and tell them to get an Uber. My mom agrees and tells him to call one. He then starts yelling about how horrible I am and that his dad would beat me with a brick and that I need to respect him. Of course, I'm confused because all I asked was for them not to drive drunk. He then continues to tell me to unalive myself over and over again while my mom just sits there smiling. My boyfriend is outside with the dog at this point, but manages to overhear Brian. He comes in and they're just about to start beating each other up when I tell my boyfriend to leave it alone. 
They eventually end up driving home, and that was the end of it, until my mom wants to bring him over again, because he wants to be friends. Mind you, he hasn't even apologized to me yet, and my mom is denying it ever happened. Obviously, I say no, and he doesn't come over. At this point, my mom has been home for a total of a week, an hour here and there over the span of three months, and hardly even has the will to buy toilet paper without me begging her for it. Thanksgiving rolls around and my mom asks if I'll be there. I say yes and ask who's all going. She tells me and tries to skim over the fact that he'll be there, knowing that I won't go if he is. I then tell her I won't be there and she begs me to come. I stand on business and I do not show up. I let it slide without much argument for the sake of myself. I also figure that if she knows I won't go because he's there, she won't invite him to Christmas. I was wrong. Yesterday I asked if he'd be there and of course she said yes, so I told her that I wouldn't be there if he was there. She then told me I don't have to do that and I stood my ground and told her that if he wants to apologize to me and my boyfriend, I'll go. She said that she'll see if he wants to, which just showed me that she really doesn't care to have me there at all. So we booked a flight to Arizona to be with my boyfriend's family for Christmas. Now my grandma is telling me that I can't just not show up and that I need to forgive him. Am I the idiot for not forgiving him and not wanting to be around him? Extra info. He is on steroids and coke. My grandma is very religious and believes in forgiving everyone and not ruining your relationship with your mom because you're upset. I do have a dad, but he lives out of state and doesn't have room, though he had spoken with my mother on multiple occasions. My boyfriend and I are planning to move to AZ in February. I am safe as well. Brian is not allowed at the house while I am there, period. I also work a lot. Also, they were being intimate while I was cleaning up their dinner and he ran down the stairs completely naked and I saw his genitals. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. Your mom puts dad above her child. That makes her a bad mother. And you do not need to forgive a bad parent, no matter what your grandmother says. If I were you, I'd start recording every interaction with him in case your mom wants to paint you as being at fault in case something happens. Has your grandmother ever met him at all or is she just acting on what she's been told by your mother? Comment two, not the idiot. One, he sexualized a 17 year old. Gross, two, he threatened to beat you, gross three. He sexualized your 20-year-old boss. Gross. Four, he is trying to hug people who clearly don't want to be hugged. Gross. Five, he sexualized your mom in front of you. Gross. Six, your mom is staying with a man if you could call him that. Who does all of this and expects you to like him? Gross. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments on my last post. It's been a rough week and I've got quite the update for you all. So after the whole Thanksgiving fiasco, I thought things couldn't get any crazier, but boy was I wrong. My mom has been seeing Brian nonstop and it's like she's under some spell. She's been missing work and I've been picking up extra shifts at the tanning salon just to keep things afloat. Remember Katie, my manager and best friend? Well, she's been a rock for me through all this. She's been covering for my mom at work, but the other day, she came over to talk about the schedule and Brian was there. He started his usual antics, but this time he crossed a line. He tried to kiss Katie right in front of my mom. Katie pushed him away and left immediately. I was shocked and my mom, she just laughed it off like it was nothing. I confronted my mom about it later and she brushed it off saying Brian was just being friendly. Friendly, that's not how you treat people, especially not in someone else's home. I was fuming but I had to keep my cool for Katie's sake. Then, there's my boyfriend. He's been my rock, but this whole situation with Brian has put a strain on our relationship. He's been patient, but I can tell he's at his breaking point. We've been planning our move to Arizona, and it can't come soon enough. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, Brian showed up at the salon while I was working. He was all apologetic, saying he wanted to make things right. I was skeptical, but I listened. He said he wanted to apologize to my boyfriend and me in person. I thought maybe, just maybe, he was sincere. So I agreed to let him come over to talk. Big mistake. He came over, all right, 
but not to apologize. He started bragging about how he and my mom were going to start a business together, a gym. He was going on about how he'd be the face of it with his bodybuilder physique and my mom would handle the finances. I couldn't believe it. My mom, who can barely handle her own finances, was going to manage a business with this guy? I lost it. I told Brian he was delusional if he thought I'd support this. My mom jumped to his defense and we got into a huge argument. It ended with Brian storming out and my mom in tears. The next day, my mom came to me saying she'd made a mistake. She admitted that Brian had been using her for money and that the gym was just a pipe dream. She was broke and now she was asking me for help. I didn't know what to do. I was angry, but she's my mom. I agreed to help her get back on her feet, but I made it clear that Brian was not welcome in our lives anymore. Things were starting to look up, or so I thought. My boyfriend and I were making plans for our move and my mom was slowly getting back to normal. But then, my grandma called. She said she'd spoken to Brian and he'd told her he'd apologized and that we were all good now. I was stunned. That was a blatant lie. I tried to explain to my grandma that Brian hadn't apologized and that he was bad news, but she wouldn't hear it. She kept saying we needed to forgive and forget. It was like talking to a brick wall. And now, here's the kicker. My mom just told me that Brian wants to come to Christmas dinner. He's apparently turned over a new leaf and wants to make amends. I told her there was no way I'd sit at a table with him, but she's insisting. So, now I'm stuck. I don't want to ruin Christmas for my mom, but I also can't pretend everything is okay with Brian. It's a mess and I'm not sure how to handle it. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.